All right, so I should first start off by saying that this isn't going to be a step-by-step. -step. I just wanna show you how I built this and the files will be available if you're interested in them. Link in the description. I have a couple of different ones here. One cool thing that I did wanna show you is that we have animation that we can also add in here. So you could animate the words, you could animate, as you can see here, I have some snow. The making of the stitches is the same across all of them. This one, there actually was a little bit of hand stuff that we had to do and I'll dive into that. And I think that's all that I can think of. So yeah, let's just jump right in and I will show you um, the first one here. Jump right over into Fusion. One of the really cool things that I was able to take advantage of is this is a new node here, the uh, S Polygon, and that's just a shapes, but now we can add in our own shapes within the shape set of nodes. So if you've never seen those, come into here into tools, and then you go into shapes, and there's a whole bunch of these. And with this, you can have a lot more complexity with doing things like duplicating and stuff like that without having a lot of extra overhead. And that's exactly what I did here. So you can see here, I duplicated this 99 times across and then those 99 duplicates, I then duplicated those 200 times. All right, so the backbone to this is obviously these little knits, these intricate knits here. And as you can see, they are grouped up as one down and one up. Um, and it makes it look very uniform and it makes a lot of different designs look very good. But the way in which that we have to do that, we have to kind of build something else so that we can then create our knit because again, we are just using the S polygon, right? So we're gonna be drawing these ourselves. And so to do this, uh, all I did is I just grabbed a fast noise and we'll view that fast noise up here. And one thing is my project is 2000 by 2000, just even numbers makes this easy. So whatever the resolution that you want, just use that, but uh, just have them as an even number. It makes things a lot easier when we're trying to create these uh, little knits here or knots or whatever you wanna call them. Okay, so let's go into color. And the first one will make it red and then the other one we will make green. It doesn't really matter what the colors are. And I'll just change this to 200, just so that we have a lot of detail here. And let's zoom in up here. Let's actually increase the uh, contrast as well. So the backbone to this is going to be the mosaic blur. That's how we're going to be able to pull. It doesn't matter what uh, icon, logo, text, whatever it is. This is how we're then going to be able to allocate uh, if a knit and its color. So it's a whole color or the whole knit is one color. And so to do that, we're just going to use the mosaic blur. So we'll just type in here blur and we will open this up. And if we take a look now, now you can see that it averaged out whatever was in that, this little boxes area into one color, right? So it just averages out those values into a single color. Now it took me a little while to understand these controls over here, but let's change this to 200. And so now we can see that overall, the amount of pixels has increased, right? To 200. And then we, what we can also do is we can change this aspect. So it's going to change the aspect ratio of each pixel. So if I was to change this to two, what we're gonna see is this box is going to take up two spots, right? So as you can see now, it takes up two spots. So now these are wide. If I wanted to go the other way, we would just take all of these and we would take it uh, 0.5 and then we would also do 100. And so it now kept the width of that one, uh, one by one pixel and it now made it tall instead of wide. So those are the parameters that we're working with. What we're gonna actually do is change this to what I found is a sweet spot for this resolution that we're working in. And that is going to be 400 by two. And that's going to give us this little area here. So now all we need is a knit to fit inside of one of these. So a down and an up to fit inside of one of these. And so to do that, I just zoomed in just like that. I then just grabbed my uh, S polygon. And as you can see, I just drew in a shape there, just like that. And that's very easy just to, you know, just go S uh, polygon, right? And then all we did is we just click, click, whoops, click, 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 right? Something like that. I then highlight everything 
and then we'd go like this, bring it to about the halfway mark, and then we can hit Shift S. Um, maybe I have to turn that off, Shift S, there we are. And then from here, all we did, oops, was just grabbing this, I just brought this in, brought this up, and you just have to make these look uh, good for you. And then I just did that. And then from there, I just duplicated this. So copy, paste, we can connect them up. And then for this other one, we just came in and we did a good old 180. And now it should be on the other side. So you can see it right there. And we will just shift that over and zoom in, come back in. And then we will just put that like that. And now if I highlight both of them, we can see that they need a little bit of help. So you just move them around until you get a good knit. And these are the ones that I came up with. From there, all we're going to do is just duplicate. We have one copy already, right? We have one copy here. So to go across, we just need 99 to go across. And if we take a look there, now we got them going all the way across. And then we just need to have them go down now. So, okay, so then they just go down. Oh no, please don't crash. Okay, so then I have them going all the way down. And we can see that we have a little gap here and that's perfectly fine. We are going to then uh, adjust that because you can see that they're much tighter over here. We will adjust that. But the first thing that I wanted to do is first make this look a little, um, roughed up a bit. And so all I did is I just threw in a fast noise, added a little bit of texture. Obviously when you're sewing with yarn, it's not gonna be you know clean. And so that's what we did there. And then all we have to do is just work on whatever our logo or our design is that we're adding in. And then the, uh, the amount that we came up with here, we're just going to copy this and paste this over here. And so here is my logo that I first had from uh, my site. And all we're gonna do is just make them, this isn't really a good one to show, but uh, we just I just added this on and then added the background on together. And then that's what I had. And then all we're gonna do, we're gonna pipe this in over top, right? And we're using all of our uh, knits as just a mask for this, whatever this design is that we have over here, right? We just use it as a mask and then we just uh, add it on and we just did a short, a small shift, right? So if I just go like this, we can see I have them coming in both ways. The foreground, obviously we're going to adjust. So we just bring this down ever so slightly to fit right in there. And then, then we have them both in there. From here, I just did this little bit of fuzz which is just taking whatever the primary background color is. And I, as you can see, there's just little pieces here. I just use another fast noise, put it on discontinuous. I can make my little bits of fuzz here. I'll show you in another one where you can see this fuzz a little bit more using that, whatever that primary color is. That then goes over it and you can see that there's little fuzz pieces, just like if you're using uh, yarn. And then all I did is I just uh, put it into 3D space by just moving it around. Here, let me just quickly show you here. I just moved it around in 3D space and then that's what we ended up with. From here, just um, media out to get it back on the edit page. And then once on the color page, all I did is I just highlight a little area, add a little bit of a vignette, and then it looks great. Uh, that's pretty much it on uh, creating all of this. Uh, let's go over to this one here because I wanted to quickly show you this. So this one, we obviously have, um, well, I have um, like snow falling and all that is is just a particle system that goes into our image before we add that texture on. So I, as you can see up here, it's just a very basic particle system, right? That then comes in to all of my elements. So I, ha I have a couple of other things in here um, I was going to animate this and I never did. Uh, but as you can see, I just have in here other, other, uh, things. Uh, and so all it's doing is just, the, it's just layering all of our elements together. And I just have an image of some snowmen 
That then comes in and it looks crispy. We then just put that mosaic on. We then get the blockiness, which remember, these are perfect blocks for our uh, all of our knit locations. So that always makes sure that it's uh, always in one knit. Um, and then having to, one thing that I didn't really explain here uh, that I can, is the reason why we we do it this way is because if we were to uh, not have this so proper, you can see that if I colored one block here, the bottom of one and the top of another one, let me just quickly show you, if I modify this here, we can see that, uh, okay, if I, well, this will make it half, so like half of one, but if I put this to like a 0.5, you'll be able to see this. Like see how it doesn't perfectly go in here? And that's why we always had to, whatever we're working with for our density size, we then have to mimic that over here. Um, just working with it for a little bit, it will make a bit more sense. But if you wanna have the down and the up to count as uh, one whole color, then this is how you would have to do that. If you do set this, to like a one, you can see that sometimes it's just a down and that might not matter to you. Uh, it, you will get different results and the other thing that you'll typically get is better looking fine text. So as you can see here, we have the text uh, is looking a bit better but we do have like little bits that randomly start, some of these start with a down, some of these start with an up uh, compared to if we have this over on two they all start with the same thing. It's up to you uh, if that means something to you or not. Uh, but let me show you one thing here because that now um, reminds me of the Blackmagic logo. So the Blackmagic logo, uh, if you've, I mean, you've probably seen it by now, is that it's very thin. And when we're working with it being very thin, you tend to get a lot of, when we put it through the mosaic blur, you tend to get a lot of blurriness in here, which would then add a lot more. And you know, if we, it, it's not clean, uh, but then if we look here, it, you know, for the most part, these letters are uh, well-defined, their edges. Uh, but if you look here, you can see that there's a little blurry bits that are in between there. And what I ended up having to do here is I ended up having to make this here, which cuts out all of these little bits. So let me quickly show you here. If I come back over to here, which is get the logo to look like that, and we come into here and I remove this, what you'll see is that it fills in a lot of those gaps. And obviously that doesn't look good. So we had to fix that by adding in all of these lines which remove. So I just put the lines in there and then in here, I just have it uh, apply an inverse mask. So wherever I have these little bars, it removed it um, from it. So that's what we ended up getting a good uh, knit here. And I feel like that looks pretty good if you ask me. Um, so there's, there's little things that you do have to adjust um, to get it to look proper, but uh, yeah. So you could have it animated. Like I was saying, I was, going to turn this one here into like a um, animated version. You could do that. You could just make it however and you know have it animated if you did or just make a still out of it. But uh, we are working in DaVinci Resolve so why not make it into a video which you could use as like a title screen or something like that. So with that being said, I think that concludes the overview for this effect. Again, the link is in the description to the project file if you're interested in that. And I do welcome you to join a post pro list if you're interested in that sort of thing. But with that being said, my name's Justin. Thanks so much for watching. Until the next one, guys. Peace.